My area of expertise, if you want to call it that, was animation. And the person who was my mentor was John Hallis of Hallis and Bachelor Films in London. And I also became the agent for South Africa, as I did for uh, Murakami, Jim, Jimmy Murakami in Dublin. And, uh, well, animation has been my thing. And I'm actually a bum artist, but I, I, I did get my whole show on the go by doing a showreel, which I drew personally. But it seems, seems to have done the trick, because I showed it to two rival companies. And in the showing, I swapped, swapped and showed the wrong film to each of the guys, and each of them said to me, have you signed yet? And I said, no, not, not yet. And then I did sign, of course, with uh, Stair Films. So that's how I, I cornered the market then at the time in animation. And I um, actually invented a product called Animads, which has become, an, which became a name in those days. And I had all the rights to the screens, uh, cinema screens in South Africa for, for animation. It was in 1954 at State Films in Pretoria, starts Film Prodixi. The head of the uh, film section was a guy called Niels Svenval. He came out from Sweden and he'd worked on many of the uh, Ingrid Bergman films and uh, other well-known actors and actresses at that time. And what he specialised mainly in was sets and art, art, the art side. And this guy taught me how to paint film titles. And in those days, everything was done on glass. So one had to paint with poster paints on glass for each setup, so you can imagine the amount of glass they had around and that had to be laid down over artwork or whatever, you know, for the background. But it did teach a person to be meticulous because your lettering on the glass, you often had to take the back end of your paintbrush, which you sharpened to a point, and you would scrape around the lettering just to make sure it was nice and sharp because seeing how big it was blown up on the screen. So that all made me very pernickety and I've always been like that since then, especially when I was in my own animation studio and uh, things had to be ready 100%. Eventually I ended up at Alpha Studios working under a guy called James Reindorp who was in charge of the animation camera, which was the Oxbury, which James Reindorp and John Oxbury designed with aerial image. And I went to Alpha Studios, uh, which was run by Ronnie Branford, and um, I was taught how to use the camera, etc. And um, I always said to myself, well, I'm going to go and open up my own business. And I spoke to the guys at Stad because I'd become, in the meantime, I'd become producer for Stad ads. And I said to them, I think I want to introduce animation. They said to me, it'll never, it's never going to be. I said, do you realize that with animation, you are giving something to the business community, the, the retail business community. You're giving them good advertising. You're giving them a product that does not age. And in the case of a lot of the uh, businesses, they didn't have small premises. So they didn't even want their premises shown. So animation was the ideal product. And that's how the Animad business started for me. And um, eventually through photo agencies, who kindly helped me all the way because I had no capital. But the Horvitches helped me and uh
they came to me the one day and said, we know you want an animation camera. And Eddie Corvitz said, I'm flying to Tokyo. Give me the specs. Tell me how you want this camera to work, which I did, using ideas from Oxbury, but making it simpler. One of the, one of the big factors was that I designed the camera so that it could be used in any building. It didn't have to have a specific balanced floor like the Oxbury had. You could take it to any office block, thinking of myself moving around. And uh, so this camera was designed, and without me paying one cent, the Orvitches invested. They had it brought out, they came and they set it up for me. Everything was done. We were one of the few animation studios that were given the right to use the Pink Panther in advertising. The, uh, an ad agency got the rights, and as I say, our work was reckoned to be of the standard that uh, um, the American producers were happy with. So we did, one of our films was uh, a Pink Panther ad for uh, Chubb safes. Um, I did some live action ads in London for one of the local insurance companies, I won't mention names, but I uh, went over there and shot, uh, I think, four or five commercials for them. I shot some of that in Piccadilly Circus. And the thing was, too, that you, weren't, you had to get permission, which I just skipped. And uh, we did the shooting there. I just had somebody uh, on the lookout for the bobbies. So I did my shots there, and then I did my close-ups. Um, I forget, I think it was in Leeds. The city, all the, the steps were the same. So I matched that, those steps to Piccadilly Circus, you know, the uh, fountain. Well, at the time, also, a little step in my career to, I was with African theatres, because I wanted to learn about that side of the business as well. So I became a film manager for them, and they seemed to send, send me to all of the hot spots or places that needed sorting out, which I did. And one of the places was Queenstown. People were very irate with the management. I went up, fixed everything up. And while I was there, a German athletic team was touring South Africa. And next thing, an IMO camera arrived for me from Johannesburg. And they said, right, you are filming some of the, of, of the sports activities of this team for African Mirror. So that was my little contribution in those days. Look, in my area now, um, I think it's fantastic. I wish I'd had the technology that they have available now. I think it's fantastic. I, I can't get over how the animation is. I won't say improved because the characters are still the main thing, and, and even some of my stuff that was done in the 60s, I could look at quite easily and be happy with. But, I mean, there are things like uh, animation of uh, human forms, and to look human. Um, we could never do it nicely, but with the techniques they've got now, it is fantastic. I can't believe, and I think, my oh God, I wish I was young and back, back in the game again. That's what I wish. There was a little series that we did for uh, Felix uh, Stark called Sus and Saw. I did that with Butch Stoltz, who was one of my animators. And, uh, I, God, I'm, I'm trying to think. I think we put out 84... Um, uh, programs. I can't remember too well now, but I, I was very proud of that because it, basically it was Butch and I. I mean, we had two or three colorists and uh, 
fill-in artists and that sort of thing. But basically it was the two of us. Well, I became a member, I think, in the 70s. Um, Stuart Farnell, he uh, made me a member. I don't know who seconded and who, who did what, but that's when it happened. It was through Stu, who I think was a very good and, and nice chap, you know. And, of course, ably succeeded by Dwayne. Look, I was a business person more than an artist or anything else. And I, through Pax Morin, Pax gave me an introduction to uh, cinema and general advertising Dublin. They owned all the cinemas north and south in, uh, in Ireland. And they were dabbling also then at the time in television advertising. And Pax introduced me to them and then they said to me, oh, you know, we, we are doing, they were doing business with me then. I was doing many productions for them. And I thought too, you know what, um, I think it's time I did a little move. So I moved the family, we all we went to Ireland, uh, lived in County, County Wicklow, and I worked from Ardmore Studios. Um, at that time, the, the MD there was John Boerman, who was very good to me. I hired all my equipment there. And the thing that tickled me the one day was I went in my little van that I'd hired to go and load up cameras and lights. And I went past the security guy and he said to me, what's, I said, I'm coming to you. He said, but where's your, where's your crew? Who, who? I said, I'm the crew. He said, I don't bloody believe you, you know. And so I loaded up, went and did my work. I did my own cutting. I did my own editing there. I actually even uh, cut the neg and spliced the neg. And I think I learnt a lot like that, you know. Um, Ireland was good to me. I liked it. And uh, when we decided to go back to South Africa, I uh, was offered the post of advertising manager director for the group. And the previous guy who just kicked the bucket, he, Morris Legier, he had 21% shares in the company. They said, would you? I said, no, I want 23. They said, you've got it. I said, I want a house. They said, you've got it. I said, I want a car. They said, you've got it. And then I didn't know what to say. I said, look, I think we're going to move back, but I'm not saying no. We came back here, yeah? and the sun was so welcome after the grey skies. And uh, somehow it, we just didn't go back, much to their annoyance. And then I believe they sold the group out to the rank organisation. So that was the end of that, because I'd taken quite a lot of business away from ranks, from production units. That's it. <laughs>